It is now six o'clock. We're going to call the meeting order. Please stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Can you please call the roll? Member Steele? Here. Member Lyon Welch? Here. Member Frederick? Here. Member Landford? What? Member Holbrook? Here. Member Dean? Here. Member Lake? Here. Uh, next, we have the request for public participation forms. Are there any individuals who would like to address the board? Uh, next, we have the approval of minutes. Uh, August 5th, we had a special meeting uh, to approve a contract and something else. And uh, is there a motion? So moved. Support? Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Are there any additions or deletions to the agenda? There are not. Okay, thank you. Next, we have the consent agenda. <coughs> Communications? I have done that. Personnel recommendations? There are quite a few today. Mr. Flynn. So, be it resolved that relative to certified staff recommendations, the Board of Education accept with regret the resignation of Max Larson Elementary Principal, Mrs. Julie Farmer, effective August 30th. The Board of Education accepting with regret after 25 years of service the retirement uh, resignation of fifth grade teacher Ms. Jane Harris, effective August 16, 2024. The Board of Education approved the administrative recommendation to employ Sarah Green for the fifth grade teaching position at Lakeland Elementary, effective immediately upon board approval. The Board of Education approved the administrative recommendation to employ Faith Pryor for the English teaching position at Lake Middle School, effective immediately upon board approval and pending background check. The Board of Education approved the administrative recommendation to employ Jan uh, Janice Grabowski as the teacher for Cardinal Academy, effective immediately upon board approval. Relative to support staff recommendations, the Board of Education approved the administrative recommendation to employ Iman Shabain for the Lake Middle School lunchroom supervisor position, effective immediately upon board approval. The Board of Education accepting with regret the resignation of Mary Steffi from the part-time supervision position at Max Larson Elementary, effective immediately upon board approval. The Board of Education approved the administrative recommendation to employ Lyle Armstrong for the part-time supervisor position at Max Larson Elementary, effective immediately upon board approval. The Board of Education approved the administrative recommendation to employ Rebecca Lawson for the part-time supervisor position at Jefferson Elementary School, effective immediately upon board approval. The Board of Education approved the administrative recommendation to employ Karen Wilbur for the part-time supervisor position at Jefferson Elementary, effective immediately upon board approval. The Board of Education approved the administrative recommendation to employ Hadel Nasser for the part-time ELL support position at Lakeland Elementary, effective immediately pending background check. The Board of Education approved the administrative recommendation to employ Rachel Hartman for the part-time caregiver position at Kids Club, effective September 1, 2024, pending background check. The Board of Education accept the termination of Sherry King Erickson from her part-time bus monitor position with Coldwater Community Schools, effective immediately upon board approval. Relative to extra duty staff recommendations, the Board of Education accept with regret the resignation of J.C. Horman from the seventh grade girls basketball coaching position, effective immediately upon board approval. The Board of Education accept with regret the resignation of Larry Knoss from the eighth grade girls basketball coaching position, effective immediately upon board approval. The Board of Education approved the administrative recommendations for the following extra duty positions as outlined. Amanda Morick for JV girls tennis coach and Jeremy Thompson for eighth grade boys basketball coach. Thank you. Next we have the acceptance and approval of gifts via member Lamford. Recently, the administration was made aware of the following gifts offered by the donors listed below. Recognition and approval for acceptance, acceptance of the gifts are being sought. Coldwater Kiwanis Club Project Fund gave $1,000 to Lakeland Elementary Readers and Leaders. 
Robert Redmond II gave $1,000 to the teachers and staff of all the buildings for the uh, back-to-school luncheon. E.B. Klein Youth and Family Center gave $360 to the uh, high school culture club. Walmart gave $250 to the ABC Challenge. And the Branch County Community Foundation gave $2,512.22 to the National Arts Society of Coldwater High School. Additionally, the teachers and programs listed below have received monetary funds from the Coldwater Community School Enrichment Fund on behalf of Branch County Community Foundation. Ariel Norris, uh, Language and Composition, $695. Derek Bean and Amy Van Zee, the Physical Education and Lifetime Fitness for $755.79. Janet Breson, 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 uh, Lace and First Rate Music for $908. Keith Johnson for Applied Engineering at the Middle School for $475. Rachel Hoard got the STEM program of $2,400. The gracious and continued support of the donors listed above is sincerely appreciated. We ask that the board accept these gifts and acknowledge the donors' generosity. So be it resolved that the Board of Education gratefully accepts the gifts as presented, and be it further resolved that a letter of appreciation on behalf of the board be sent to the donors indicated above for their worthwhile and generous gifts. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. You did such a nice job. You can do the financials. Be resolved that the following accounts for July, July be approved for payment as follows. General fund accounts in the amount of $2,506,094.29 and special revenue accounts in the amount of $81,799.32. And be it resolved that the general fund financial statements be approved as presented. So there. Thank you. That is the consent agenda. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Support. Uh, any discussion? Mary Stepp, did she work for the district for 30 years or more? That would be a other question. I don't know, but I can get that answer to you tomorrow. Because it seems to me she was working for the district when my kids were going to elementary school. I don't know for certain, but I can let you know. Hmm. And Bob Redman is. Is that the, is he the, the prison warden's son or? I don't know that. He's the Mimic guy. Yeah, he's That's the all we know him about. Guy. <laughs> yeah, he's the Mimic man. <laughs> or the BISD social worker, I think. Wasn't he? That's what he was about, yeah. Maybe it's his son. Maybe. Hmm. All right. We can look at the Maybe it's a grandson. Yeah. I'm sorry, brother. <laughs> Maybe it's a grandson. Curious. Is it? Is that corrected at me in any way? No, sir. No. <laughs> All right. Next, we have building reports. Anybody wish to add anything to their building report? Well, I want to give a shout out to Premier Finishes for this building. It looks great. Pulling Thank up, you. it really looks nice. A lot better. <laughs> they were wonderful to work with as well. I mentioned to you privately, but um, they were very respectful of of us and you know communicating with us and keeping us on timelines and everything. Um, I was very happy with their work. Yeah, they were noisy. Nice. We could have met somewhere else. Could have okay. had coffee. All right. Uh, next we have the curriculum director instruction report. What have you got to report there, Mr. Dancer? I think everything in your packet. Uh, do you have any questions on it? Also, the safe return to learn packet is in there. Uh, every six months, school district that received ESSER funds uh, had to submit a plan for safe return through the life of the grant. That expires September 30th this year, so it'll be our final plan for submission. Curious to know whether our students are reading better now that you've been on the staff day. are working very hard to improve our reading scores. Okay. Uh, board committee reports. Let's see. 
We have the policy committee. Policy committee. Talk about that at all? Which involves the the Title IX policy. Title IX policy. Yes. You know, it looked like it was an old policy that was revised, but I couldn't find that number. It was they had you Right. This is a new one, but as um, the the Neola rep used a, a different school's um, template for oh. for ours to walk through. Okay. So he just didn't personalize it to us, but it's a brand. It's a new. New. Uh, yeah, it's not revised. It's a new policy. All right, and also crowdfunding. Yes. Uh, so it'll be the uh, first evaluation of the. Title IX one, but we're going to pass the crowdfunding. No, one. other way around. All the other way around. The Title IX one because of the change in federal we law. We have to do it now. We do it now because the law went into effect August one. Okay. And then the <clears throat> the crowdfunding is the first reading, so we'll have to do a second reading and, and adoption next month. Okay. Uh, there were no other committees. Nope. Superintendent's report. Um, give you a, a few more pages in your packet this month. Um, opening week went very well, I thought. I heard Mrs. Reardon say one of the best opening weeks ever. Um, un, our unofficial numbers, and I stress unofficial because withdrawals have not been taken out of Skyward yet, but our unofficial numbers as of Friday show enrollment up over 100 students. Um, and there will be some, some change in that before fall count day, but the official fall count day is Wednesday, October 2nd. And if you recall, 90% um, of our student fund, our funding per pupil uh, allowance is based on our fall count. And um, that's in addition to the 10% that was in the spring. So they go by calendar year when they talk about those, not school year. Does that mean we should hire four new teachers? I don't know about four, but We've got a couple of classrooms that are that are pretty full, but I don't know if we have space to put new classrooms. Um, but that's a conversation for another day. It's spread out. Yeah, yep. Um, our new website is up and going. All buildings and principals have been connected, but we're still attending to some minor issues as we go along the way. We're finding some, some bugs and, and we're taking care of those. Um, Chartwell Summer Food Service Program, I took this out of her report that is given to you, but this summer, uh, they served 44,415 meals. That's breakfasts and lunches. And that's up from 38,928 last summer. And that uh, this summer, they were able to include a variety of fresh produce with more than half of that fresh produce being from local Michigan farms. Uh, so that was really exciting. Um, and in your packet, there's actually an uh, article from the Coldwater Daily Reporter uh, about the success that they had this summer. CBPU rebates, we've talked uh, in the past that we're getting um, upwards of, of $125,000 back in energy efficiency programs through CBPU. And uh, this past month, we've received two big rebate checks, uh, one for Max Larson and one for the high school, totaling over $36,000. And the press release that goes along with that from CBPU is along with this report. And the Aquatic Center, just an update, we're, we're continuing conversation with the city and others. Um, we're looking at the possibility of, of hiring a full-time Aquatic Center manager, someone who would be uh, bet, better timed and better equipped with time to go out to the community and promote the, the Aquatic Center. And then we're looking at uh, the possibility of annual sponsorships and donations to help offset the cost for the Aquatic Center. Any questions? Is that going to include uh, inviting the swimming teams to provide life to lifeguards? We will absolutely invite them to do that. Thank you. Any discussion items? No? No. Next we have the action items. Uh, <coughs> Request to certify the MASB 2024 voting delegates and alternates. Uh, each year, the Board of Education is asked to appoint members to the Michigan Association of School Boards Delegate Assembly. Be resolved that Coldwater Community Schools Board of Education certifies the following individuals to represent our school board 
at the 2024 MASB Delegate Assembly. I think you automatically, and I would be happy to serve with him as a voting delegate. And then you guys need to start splitting it up here. We need a voting delegate and we need three alternates. Come on, I, jump in I, there. I can be an alternate. I have no problem okay. being an alternate. Mr. Steele, oh, well, you've got a busy year. Yes. We should leave you alone. Right. I, I could be an alternate if you need me to. Let me arm twist a couple of them. Oh, yeah, that's fair. <laughs> Kate, could you possibly be an alternate? I could be an alternate. Would anybody want to be a voting delegate? Oh, Claire. Are you going okay. to go? Are you actually no. going to go? No, I'm not going to go. I am not. Either of you? Doubt it. Okay. You'll Maybe. be one? Yeah, if you're not going to okay. go, I'm not going. <laughs> okay. So I can do it by alternate. mail. So one more alternate. We need four alternates? Nope, oh, just three. three. That's three. all. Three. Kate, three. myself, and Claire, right? Well, I have no. Claire, so if we don't go, we go as alternates. No, I'm joking. <laughs> and, I'm joking. And Bob is busy this year, so. I thought maybe Dr. Lanford would love to step oh, up since I'm and be, busy be an alternate. <laughs> what do you mean? You just deal with animals. Yeah. You being the worst one. And you're the worst one. I guess I said that out loud, didn't I? It's good that you get your licks in now, buddy. So is that a yes? Yeah. Sure. Okay. <laughs> is there a motion? Some support. support. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Thank you for your volunteer. Next, we have the request to approve the proposed updates and changes to the Coldwater High School Student Handbook. Coldwater High School Principals, Dr. Stephen Hope, the, and the Assistant Principal, Mr. Brian Shirk, are requesting board approval of the updates and changes to the Coldwater High School Student Handbook for the 2024-2025 school year. A list of the changes and additions is included with this report for board perusal. Uh, be it resolved, the Board of Education approves the updates and changes to the Coldwater High School Student Handbook for the 2024-25 school year as presented as their motion. Support. Any discussion? Yeah, did you guys all get my response? To yep, yep, met with them and we changed that wording. Okay, because I didn't see the change in the... No, we didn't. I, I made the change in the end of the week um, update okay. to the board, okay. um, but we'll make sure that the change is in the final okay. because I understand there's a spelling error or two as well that we have to look at. Okay. Otherwise, we're creating. But thank you. Uh, who worked on that? Uh, that was mostly Mr. Shirt. So most of the, I, I would say I will give him all of the credit. Well, well next year, not only must a couple words. <laughs> <laughs> Next year, I'm wondering if you you could put a red line maybe through the things that are deleted from the handbook and the and maybe highlight the things that are added to the handbook. Mm -hmm. I mean, I had to read 4,500 pages. Oh wow! I had to read a lot of versions of it, so I get it. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I'll fix it for you. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. the purchase of two merchandising display warmers for food services at Lake Middle School. Be resolved, the Board of Education approves the purchase of two merchandising display warmers for food services at Lake Middle School from Great Lakes West in the total amount of $10,942.90 to be paid for with funds from the food services account as presented. Is there a motion? So moved. Support. Okay. Uh, any discussion? What? Hey, isn't Charlie supposed they... to have food for us up here? Sometimes. That's 
chart wells is not they don't care. I didn't get it out. There, chart wells doesn't the, care about us anymore. There are some um, <laughs> oh. <laughs> pickles in the refrigerator samples. I'll make sure you get them all before we uh, eat. <laughs> <laughs> That's, <laughs> That's me. So I'm sorry. <laughs> what did they do before they had these warmers? Do they, they have warmers, they but have they're not warmers, good? But yeah, they're, they're, like, they're like 15 they're, years old. And or they're whatever. wider, so they need more space in the lunch lines, and so these go up a little bit taller. They're newer. It'll provide more space. Okay. Their motion. So they did a good idea. Yeah, oh, we just well, roll call vote. Then. Uh, Member Frederick. Yes. Member Lanford. Yep. Member Dean. Yes. Member Holbrook. Yes. Member Lyon Welch. Yes. Member Steele. Yes. Member Lake. Yes. Motion passes. Next, we have the recommendation to approve the one year subscription to Stratocyte for additional emergency response services. Stratocyte offers another layer of functionality for first responders should an emergency situation arrive in one of the buildings. Be it resolved that the Board of Education approves a one year subscription effective August 1st, 2024 through July 31st of 2025 with Stratocyte for $6,000 as presented. Is there a motion? So, support. Discussion? Yeah, I saw that it was 2500 for them to do the startup stuff, and then 3500 I believe it was, for the yearly subscription. Correct. So, in the future, are we going to have the startup costs every no. year, just no. the 3500 Right. The startup, the portal setup fee is a one-time fee. And then um, the annual subscription to the service is $500 per building, okay. covering seven buildings. Okay, cool. And I'm not certain, I didn't understand what services they were actually providing. Us. So this is to um, combine the efforts of all of the digital mapping that we had done in the past and connecting it with the first responders that are providing them an online portal so, for example, if an incident occurs at the middle school, um, we have a map of the middle school, but what we don't have is where do all the first responders go. And what Stratosite will do is they will work with us and work with the first responders to determine where do you set up the triage, where do you, where do all the ambulance go and That's set up staging. where, yeah, where all the staging is around um, for all of the different layers. So all first responders will be able to bring that up in the electronics in their vehicle and and so they'll know if they're the first to get there or among the first to get there if they're not charging through the door where they're where they're to be set up so it's to save time thank you very much uh roll call vote uh member Steele. yes member lyon welch yes member frederick yes member lanford yes member holbrook yes member dean yes member lake Yes, motion passes. Next, we have the first reading and adoption of the new Title IX policy 2264. Be resolved the Board of Education recognizes that there is a compelling reason to adopt a new Title IX policy that addresses the recent revisions to the Title IX regulations after one reading under bylaw 0131.1 to ensure the Board's policy complies with 2024 Title IX regulations effective August 1st, 2024. Be resolved the Board of Education adopts policy 2264 in the interest of complying with the 2024 Title IX regulations as presented. Is there a motion? So moved. Support. Any discussion? Roll call vote. Member Lanford? Yeah. <coughs> yes. Member Dean? Yes. Member Steele? Yes. Member Frederick? Yes. Member Holbrook? Yes. Member Lyon Welch? Yes. Member Lake? Yes. Motion passes. Next, we have the first reading of the crowdfunding. When I get there. First reading of the revised crowdfunding policy 6605, the board policy advisory. Committee, along with the Superintendent Paul Flynn, met on August 14th to review and recommend a revision to the district's crowdfunding policy 6605 with the support of the Policy Advisory Committee. 
revised policy 6605 is ready for the first reading by the Board of Education submitted for the entire board. It's consideration at this time be it resolved the Board of Education acknowledges the first reading of the revised crowdfunding policy 6605 as presented. Is there a motion? So moved. Support. Any discussion? So have, have we determined if we're doing option one or two? Should I be marked? It, oh, it is marked. It is marked. It, it's yeah, okay, it's option it two. That says it will be okay. allowed. Yeah. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed. Or the motion passes. Um, we, as a board, have been attending high reliability training, uh, which is a new program introduced to the school district this year. And we also had an in-service from the MASB on the uh, superintendent evaluations, which is sort of corresponds to the, eva the new evaluation forms and uh, that are used to evaluate principals and teachers. Uh, at that meeting, they recommended that we have a superintendent evaluation quarterly. And so I think we're going to start doing that. Our first one will come with the next meeting. It'll be a closed session. Uh, just a brief, might be five seconds, but it, every quarter we're going to have a closed session for this uh, superintendent evaluation. Uh, other than that, I don't think there's anything else coming. Anything else? Nope. We're adjourned. Okay. Well, the next meeting. Yes. Sorry. Next meeting is. Oh, no. oh, it's here. September 23rd. Now we're adjourned. <laughs>